You're about to watch a previous recorded message here at Elkhorn Baptist Church. If this message has impacted your life in any way and you'd like to donate financially to this church, please do so on our website at www.elkhornbc.org. Again, that is www.elkhornbc.org. Now please prepare your heart for a message straight from the Lord. Be blessed. Today, we're going to start a series, a new series. It's called Dirty Jobs. Dirty Jobs. And uh, so this is going to be part one. There's going to be four parts. And uh, how many of you know that uh, serving God sometimes gets dirty? It gets dirty. So we're, today we're going to uh, take some scripture and we're going to preach on that. How many of you realize that your serving has a higher purpose? You're not just serving just to get by. You've got a purpose behind your serving. So our lives have purpose. Whether you realize or not, you have a purpose. You have a purpose for being here today. Not just to say, I'm a Christian, and I went to church. Check mark, I've got my week done. Well, good luck with that. How's that working for you? Uh, it's hard enough being a Christian, and it's hard enough with Jesus. I can't imagine living without him. You know, so, you know, a lot of, a lot of churches, a lot of Christians, uh, they're surviving, but they're not thriving. They're, they're surviving. They're getting by. You know, things are good today, and long tomorrow. Got a good day today, and then tomorrow your life falls to pieces. There's no foundation with that. Well, let me ask you a question. What if you knew that you only had a year to live? What if, what if I told you, or what if God spoke to you and said, you've got six months to live? Well, let's even get deeper than that, a month. <laughs> well, let's go deeper than that. What if you knew today? was your last day now I'm being honest with you because listen to me that could be the case today could be your last worship service today could be your last time you get to praise the Lord in the flesh today could be your last day here on earth let me ask you a question would you waste your day or your six months or your year on foolishness on things that really just didn't matter people fussing and arguing all the time and would you waste your day and waste your last breath in the in worrying about some of the things that you're worrying about right now taking your mind and your attention off the godly principles would you waste your last day breathing worrying about your bills no no I wouldn't matter of fact I don't even worry about them anyhow you say well preacher you need to worry about it. listen I serve God I pay my tithe, and he's going to do the rest. Now, I'm going to be a good steward and a good servant, and I'm going to work hard for it, but I, I'm, I'm not worried about that. It'll come. So I don't think you'd worry. I personally would prioritize my life. If I knew today was my last day, my last time breathing, I would prioritize my life. My last moments, I would prioritize it. I really would. So I'm getting ready to read to you and preach to you a series of sermons called Dirty Jobs. <laughs> And I want, I want to show you something in the Bible that's very unique, very unusual. It's the last moments of Jesus. He was getting ready to go to Calvary, Golgotha. He was getting ready to die, the most crucial death that he could die. And he said he'd done something very unusual that a lot of us just overlook in your Bible in John chapter 13. That's where we're going to be going. The last thing God did, his final moments of Jesus' life, what seems strange to me and you, he done something crazy. He washed people's feet. He washed people's feet. And I, I, I don't know about you, but that probably wouldn't be on my bucket list. It probably wouldn't say, you know, dude, I'm going to wash Haywood's feet before I die. <laughs> he ready to, <laughs> don't do it. I'll do it right now. <laughs> I'm telling you. But, you know, it probably wouldn't be on my bucket list. We got something called here in, in Camelsville and all over the, the movie is called Bucket List. We've all got a bucket list. Things you do before you die. And I hear people say this all the time. Well, I'd like to go to Grand Canyon. i like to go to Hawaii. i like to go on a cruise. i like to meet a famous movie star. I hear this all the time, but I've never heard anyone say on their bucket list, I want to wash feet. I've never, I've never heard that. Have you? I haven't. But Jesus, the man of caliber that he is and was, he, he said, the last thing I want to do before I go to Calvary, is I want to have a supper with my disciples. 
I want to gather around the table with them. And after it's over, I want to put a towel on my waist and I want to wash their feet. That's crazy. But let me read this story to you in the Bible in John chapter 13. If you're there, say amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's good to see you. John chapter 13. Verse 1 says these words. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew, listen to this, that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to be with the Father. He knew his time was drawing nigh. Do you know that your time is drawing nigh? See, we're not getting healthier. We're getting closer to heaven. Every second that clicks off that clock right now, we're getting that much closer to heaven. That's what makes the Baptist pastor want to shout. That just, you know, because here's what we're doing now is what we're going to do forever. What I'm doing now is going to do forever. You won't need a preacher because you'll have the ultimate prophet in front of you. And his name is Jehovah Jireh. God, amen? His name's Jehovah God, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. He's in front of us. He'll be forevermore. So I'm going to ask you a question. What's on your bucket list? If, you're, if this was your last day, what's your last moments? What are you going to do? I'm declaring today we need foot washers back in the church. Listen to this. Verse 2. And the evening meal was being served. And the devil, listen to this, had already prompted Judas, the scared son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Listen to this. Verse 3. Powerful verse. Don't miss this. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer garment, his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. This is Jesus. Everybody say, this was Jesus. Verse 5, it says, After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet. Stinky, dirty job, stinky feet. Drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. Verse 6, and, si and, he, and then came Simon Peter. Here comes Peter, you know. And he said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Oh, yes, I love Jesus. Jesus replied, do you not realize now what I am doing? But later you will understand. Listen to this. I'm going to go back to verse 6. These words, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? God says, well, don't you realize what I'm doing? Verse 8 says, no, Peter said, no, I don't understand what you're doing. Listen to this. You shall never, never, God, never, Jesus, will you wash my feet. Boy, that's a stinking prideful man. Watch this. I love what God did. Jesus answered, unless, this is how powerful this is, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Unless I wash your nasty, stinking feet. You have no part with me. This is some powerful scripture. Then Lord Simon replied, Not just my feet, Lord. Wash my hands, wash my hair, wash my head, wash my feet, wash my body. Because he finally understood at this point, it's not about just the feet, it's about the heart. He finally got the realization, this is Jesus. And if I want to be with Jesus, I'll do what Jesus says. It's more than coming to church on a Sunday. It's about living for him on a Monday. Hallelujah. It's about not just a Monday. It's all 72 hours in that. Listen to this. Listen to this. I want to show you this. Verse 10. He says, a person who has not had the bath needs only not to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. Watch this. Because what God is saying is if you'll wash their feet, the rest will come. The rest will come. The rest will come. He says these words. And you are clean, through not, though not every one of you. Verse 11. For he knew who was going to betray him. Listen to this. God knew. Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him. But watch this. And that was why he said not every one of you was clean. When he had finished washing their feet. He finished washing their feet. He put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you not understand what I have done for you? Then he asked. You call me teacher. You call me Lord. You call me God. You call me rabbi. And rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, listen to this, your Lord and teacher have washed your feet. Listen to me. It's going to mess you. It's going to mess the Baptist church up this morning. He says these words. Now that you know who I am and I have washed your feet, I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master. 
Now watch this. Nor is this messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that, I, now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. How many of y'all want to be blessed? Wash some feet. Be a foot washer. Hallelujah. You say, Brian, that's just crazy. No, that's what Jesus does. That's what Jesus does. I got one point I want to give you, and if you're taking notes, praise God. If not, you need to. Because you'll go back on these sermons, and one day you'll say, you know what? Now I understand what he said. And the one other point I want to give you today is that you cannot serve God according to your agenda. Listen to me. You cannot serve God according to your agenda. You cannot. The Bible said Jesus got up from the table, got up from a meal, took off his garment, took off his outer clothing. And according to Vine's Expository Dictionary, garment, listen to me, I want you to write this down, this is powerful. Garment equals agenda. Garment, when Jesus got up from the table, from eating and fellowshipping, it said he took off his agenda, his garment, laid it to the side and said, Scott, how can I serve you today? How, what can I do for you today? See, we as Christians try to make the, the Bible come to us. We as Christians have to go to the Bible. The Bible is our standards. The Bible is our lifeline. And if God did it, I just beg today that we need to do it. We need to do it. So the Bible must, we, we must not have the Bible to come to us. We must go to the Bible. And see, to serve God effectively, we've got to lay down our garments. You've got to lay down your agenda. You've got to lay, watch this, it's going to hurt. Y'all, y'all grab your toes. Church is not about your agenda. I had people come to me all the time. All the, why don't you do this and why don't you do that? Why would you want to change souls being saved and lives being changed if the agenda is working? Why veer off of the agenda? Go forward with God. We're not changing. Because here's the deal, we got an agenda. This is what God said and evidently it's working. Because souls are being saved. But I want you to think about this. And I want you to write this down. Selfish people don't serve. Selfish people don't serve. Selfish people will critique you. Preacher, deacon, laity, associate pastor. And they'll critique you and they'll tell you what you're doing wrong. But what I'm trying to tell you is, is a true servant of God gets dirty. Gets dirty. Puts a towel around his waist. Hallelujah. Well, falls on his legs and his feet and gets down and says, How can I serve you today? A true man and true woman, a true servant of God, would take off his garment, lay his agenda to the side, and it don't matter if there's blue walls, pink walls, pink carpet. Hallelujah. I want Jesus. I want the presence of God. I've got to feel him like I've never felt him before. Carpet don't mess me up. When God don't show up, that's what messes me up. So it don't matter if you got Barney purple chairs. It don't matter what color socks you got on. It don't matter where you was at last night. We take you and we receive you in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on in and let's have some church. Amen? That's what it's about. Don't ever lose this. When you start thinking church is about you and you need to get your way, you need to take your garment off. Hard word. True word. Jesus Christ, God, was around the table. Here's what God spoke in my heart the first service. We've been sitting around the fellowship table too long. It's time to get out in the world. It's time to get dirty. It's time to put a towel around our waist. It's time that we bow down and say, how can I serve you, Jimmy? How can I make you better? What can I do for you? How can I bless your ministry? Besides critiquing all the time and busting people up and discourage them, how about let's get under them, pick them up, and get them to Jesus? Hallelujah. I'll preach it anyhow. Amen. That's what we got to do. That's what God did. How many of y'all know y'all are a mess? I don't have to sit there and tell y'all, y'all mess, you raise your own hand. Johnny got both hands up. Watch this, preacher got both, both the hands and legs. Yeah, I'd raise the other if I wouldn't fall down. I know that. I don't need people to tell me, hey, what you're doing wrong. Help me. Help me. Watch me. Help me. Help me get to Jesus. Bring the best out of my life. Hallelujah. I feel the Lord. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't acting like I'm preaching good, but I'm preaching good. 
it's not going to make sense to you, but I want to tell you anyhow. You'll never be fulfilled. You'll never find fulfillment until you become a servant. Listen to me. Please, God, you let them give them ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying today. You will never be fulfilled. You'll never find joy. You'll never find your calling. You'll never find anything. You'll be miserable until you start serving. Some of the best gifts that I have ever got is the ones I gave away. Is the ones I gave away. It's not about, here's what Christians are. Y'all ready? Gimme, gimme, gimme. Gimme, gimme, gimme. And God's sitting there going, I gave you, gave you, gave you. Now give it, give it, give it. He gave it, gave it, gave it. Now give it, give it, give it. He gave it, gave it, gave it. Now give it, give it, give it. He gave it, gave it, gave it. Give it, give it, give it. I can make my own music up. I'm telling you, I make myself happy. He's already gave it to us. We've got everything we need to make a difference in this world. The problem is the churches are not serving. Woo! Preach that, white boy. That's good. That's good. One thing missing in the churches today is foot washers. Foot washers. Dr. McGee said these words, and I want to give it to you. He said the true meaning behind the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet was that they all had dirty feet. I don't care if you took a bath this morning. Your feet stink. Dirty feet. There's not, I don't care if anybody says, there's not pretty feet. They, they, they're ugly. Dirty feet. And you got to realize in Jewish times, they was not pretty feet. They had on sandals without socks. And you know what happens when you don't wear socks? If you've got a teenager, you can say, hey, man, they stink. And I'm just telling you the truth. And God, there they end. They're in there around the table. And here's what they were doing. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to see a perfect example of the church? Here's what they were doing. I'm going to sit beside Jesus. No, you're not. I am. No, I'm sitting beside Jesus. Peter, you sat beside him last time. Well, John, it's your turn this time. No, 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 no. And I can hear just see Peter now. Peter was a cocky old man. I'm telling you. He said, nobody else walked on water. So it's my turn to walk on water. What have you done for God? And man, they were fighting. They were fussing and fighting. Who was going to sit beside Jesus? And who was going to do what? And who was going to do this? And the next miracle... And God, I can just see Jesus now getting up and saying, really? Really? This is what the Passover meal, the Passover feast, and you're fussing? And God gets up, Jesus gets up, puts a towel around him. He kneels down, and he says, Peter, sit down. Sit down. But Lord, nobody else done it. Peter, shut up. And sit down. See, a lot of times the Holy Spirit's got to come by and say, be quiet. It's not about you. Take your garment off. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. How many of you know I can sit up here right now and just pick this church to death? I could sit up here. I could. Too dark. Gray carpet. What's them red things on the wall? Why is the speaker so high? We can, how many of y'all know? It's truth. You say, I know, I've never heard anybody. Follow me for a day. <laughs> Follow me for a day. You say, people really say that? Yeah, and they're sitting by you. Oops. Had a Britney Spear moment. Did it again. It's the truth. How many of y'all want some Holy Ghost preaching? How many of y'all are ready for it? I'm talking about some foot washing church services. I'm talking about where the Spirit of God will show up and set you down, and he'll get behind you and push you up when he needs you. That's what I'm talking about. We ain't got too many sissy churches on. Oh, I'll be good. We need some good old preaching. We need some good old foot washing. We need some good old revival back in the county. We need some Holy Ghost movement back in the churches. We need some Holy Ghost singing in the churches. We need to work and work and work and get dirty. Everybody say amen. Say that's good preaching. That is good preaching. Thank you. Let me tell you a story, true story. The new pope, Catholic pope who just got voted in. He done something crazy. This is on television. He went into a local prison where he was at. He showed up. He told the guard, he said, would you get me five chairs? Five chairs. And the guard said, yes, sir. He put 
five chairs in a row. And the Pope said, now, he just looked around, he said, I need five men to sit in these chairs. Five inmates with orange suits on came down and sat in the chair. And the Pope, the new Catholic Pope, looked down at them, and all of a sudden he done something crazy. He knelt down. Just knelt down. I won't go down so I won't get back up. He knelt down. And all of a sudden he done something more crazy than that. He started taking their shoes off. And then Tommy he done something more crazy than that. He said, you have a bowl of water. <laughs> the guard got him a bowl of water. And all of a sudden the Pope, with five prisoners right in front of him, he stooped down with a towel wrapped around him. They, some of them committed murder. Some of them were just in there. I'm, I'm telling you, it was a messed up situation. They were in there for a reason. But the Pope didn't judge them. He looked at them as human beings. He looked at them with hope. He looked at them with breath in his lungs saying, as long as you're breathing, God loves you and there's still hope. There's still hope. This Pope bent down with water and he washed the prisoner's feet. He washed their feet. And this was on live television. When do you see a Pope on live television in a prison washing feet? And then, Courtney, he done something like I would probably, God's still dealing with me on this. He dried them. Then he anointed them with oil, made a cross on their foot, prayed a prayer over them, and then he kissed their feet. He kissed their feet. My question to me and to you, I got so convicted when I, when I seen that. I had been pastoring for 16 years. I, I've been in the ministry for a long time, but I've never washed no one's feet. I have never stooped down and looked at somebody and said, how can I serve you? See, preaching is the icing on the cake. I love this. This is my gifting. This is what I do. And you know what's bad, Greg? And this is so hard for me to say. I could come up with a three-point sermon and make you shout, but it don't mean I was in the presence of God. I'm telling you, the moment you get in the presence of God is when you humble yourself and get down and say, how can I serve you today, God? Can I wash your feet today, God? We need a Holy Ghost foot washing church again. That's what God laid on my heart. Hallelujah. The Pope was a servant. He was a foot washer. I don't care if he's a Catholic. Y'all get over yourself. There's going to be Catholic in heaven if they ask God to save them. There's going to be Baptists in hell that didn't ask God to save them. A denomination don't save you. Hey, but my God saves you. The blood saves you. He's a good God. It's all about Jesus in this house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It ain't about being a Baptist. It's about being a Christian. It's about being filled with the Holy Ghost. And serving people. And serving people. Serving people. Turn your name and say, it's not about you. The churches are missing this. Watch this. Homes are missing this. Husbands, when was the last time you washed your wife's feet? Never, never, never have I washed Dana's feet. To be honest with you, I don't want to. Y'all got the wrong pastor in front of y'all, because I am not going to lie to make you like me. I'm going to be honest with you. Feet are nasty. They are. All them hangnails and warts and cuts. And that wasn't in my notes, but it's good anyway. And it just makes my hair just stand up, you know? Ugh. It's nasty. It's a dirty job. It's, <laughs> who in their right mind? Let me wash your toes. Ugh. I mean, it, it just... Oh, oh, uh, anyhow. Then Jesus comes off with a radical statement. He said, do what I do. And I'm like, I, I love you, 
I don't go fishing like I used to. I don't go rabbit hunting like I used to. But Lord, feet, for real. So when was the last time? Elkhorn. Yes. Daddy. Mama. Husband. Wife. Youth. That you wash somebody's feet. That you wash somebody's feet. Wash their feet. I know some of you are saying, well, Brother Brian, I just don't know about things like that. So are you telling me you're better than Jesus? Are you telling me that Jesus did it, but you're so good, you don't have to do it? So, we're not better than Jesus. My question to you is this. Praise Him, you all come. What purpose are you serving right now? Be, I'll be honest with you. You write this down in your notes. Write it down. Let me ask you something. Go a little bit deeper. What do people get when they get you? <laughs> do they get somebody just halfway does stuff? Mediocrity? Barely getting by? Got done? No. Let me ask you, if you were to quit your job, would they sit there and go, wow, that's going to be some hard shoes to feel? Or would they sit there and go, hallelujah, hallelujah, they're gone, they're gone, they're gone. I, I know some people like that. It's called blessed subtractions. That's what it's called. I'm being honest with you. I remember, I know I'm old school, even though I'm not old, hallelujah, Amen. I'm still come from the old school. That you ought to work. I come from the old school. Clean up after yourself. I just come from the old school. If you borrow something, when you take it back, it ought to be better than what you when you borrowed it. I guess I'm old school. My daddy used to whip my rear end. Parents, how many of you know it's okay to spank your child? That's right. Amen. Amen. It is. Listen. I have some hellions to come to my office. And here's some of the advice I give the parents. Bust their butt. Whip them. Take them behind the Holy God woodshed and wear them out. Wait, I'm, this is good preaching. How many of you know it's okay to make your kids serve? Wash the dishes. Mow the yard. Clean the room. Dry the dishes. Put the dishes in the dishwasher. It is okay to discipline your children. It is okay to spank their rear ends. It is okay to make them serve. Let me go back up here. It's okay. I remember one time I borrowed a car. And uh, it was my uncle's vehicle. And I, I, my daddy said, these words, he said, before you take it back, let me see it. I'm like, all right. I knew how my daddy was, so I didn't have a lot of money, but I put $5 worth of gas in it, less than what I had in it when I got it. And uh, I just did a, a quick fix, sweep, you know what I'm saying? And I brought it back up, and I thought it looked good. My daddy come outside, he said, pop the trunk. And I'm like, what? I didn't clean the trunk. He said, pop the trunk. And so <laughs> I went back there, and it, it, what, it, if my uncle was... It's his fault. It was dirty. But anyhow, <laughs> I borrowed it. And the meaning of all this was, it's not about a hand me out. It's about pushing me up. My daddy said, when you take that back, that, that trunk needs to be spotless. Now, it made me mad. When I cleaned it, I wasn't praying. I was speaking in some other tongue. <laughs> Y'all don't act all religious and holy and dignified and all that. Like Y'all just like I am, you're a stinking mess. Yeah. And so anyway, I cleaned the trunk and I took it back. And my uncle was happy and I was mad. <laughs> but the concept was this. When you get something, return it better. Right. When you borrow something, bring it back better than when you found it. If you're walking across this yard out here and there's paper in the yard, pick it up. Don't bring your junk to church. Amen? Amen. Keep your junk in your trunk. Amen? That's good right there. 
Treat God's house better than you treat your house. Serve the Lord while you got a chance to serve the Lord. I'm preaching now, hallelujah. It's good. It's the truth. I told the first service, I remember it was the day that we was coming over here and there was some trash in the parking lot. And probably about 50 or 60 people just walked by it, left it, didn't do nothing with it. And Haywood Reiner walked out. I love this man. I'll fight for this man. He's, he's my spiritual daddy. He reached down. He didn't throw it down. He picked it up, and he put it in the trash where it belonged. Now, guys, I'm going to be pastor just for a moment. As we grow as a church, you're going to have to grow too. Clean up after yourself. Can I say it again? Clean up after yourself. Clean up after yourself. Y'all get, I'm going to say it again. Do y'all say amen, preacher, or something? Clean up after your. All right. As we grow, serve, serve. Dirty jobs. Watch this. Welcome to ministry. It's dirty. It's nasty. You get mad. You get upset. Welcome to church. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, if you walk in here and it's your agenda, your coat, all about you, you're still going to get mad. There's got to come a time. Now, listen to me. I'm done. you got to stand up from the fellowship, from the table. We're the ones that you are with all the time. you got to take off that outer garment. Watch me. Watch me. Take off that outer garment, your agenda. Lay it to the side. Humble yourself, swallow your pride, kneel down, look up at the person and say, listen, how can I serve you? How can I serve you? And that's where I'm at in my journey right now. Dirty jobs. Terry being a deacon. It's not always clean, is it? I I think if you've got a clean church and no problems, nothing's going on, you probably got the devil for the pastor. He's telling you what you want. You got a fluff gospel. Do what you want. Act the way you want. Everything will be okay. I'm not him. I believe in Holy Ghost conviction. I believe in walking that walk and talking that talk. I believe as God's children, it's time to rise up. Hey, guys, watch this. Here's my commission. You ready? Get dirty. I bet you never had a pastor tell you that, have you? Get dirty for God. Get your hands dirty for God. Get in the ministry and get dirty. Don't complain. Get dirty. Turn your neighbor and say, it's time to get dirty. Time to get dirty. Time to get dirty. Maybe the husband should have looked at their wives and said that. Here's the deal. Y'all ready? It's time for Elkhorn Baptist Church to be a foot washing church. It's time, it's time, it's time. Guys, y'all have done so good. I am so proud when people look at me and say, hey, you Brother Brian? I, do, I went up to the gas station up here at Marathon. I walked in, they said, are you Brother Brian? I said, all depends. And I said, is it good or bad? She said, oh, it's good, it's good, it's good. She said, we work on Sundays. And she said, I want you to know, we have your services going off up here at this gas station. Yeah. Isn't that really good? Isn't that so good? Yeah. And look at you guys, man. Y'all doing good. And I encourage you. But you'll find fulfillment. You'll find true fulfillment in your life when you become a servant. When you say, you know what? It's time to get dirty for Jesus. I love it. I am ate up with it. I am consumed with getting dirty for God. I love drug addicts. Oops. I love prostitutes. Oops. I love drug dealers. You know why? Because if you want to find God, you find a hurting person and you'll find Jesus Christ. He'll be there every time. And they'll tell you the truth. They'll, they'll tell you the truth, man. How you doing? Well, I just smoked two, smoked two joints. 
We had a man show up here one time for church. He is drunk as a skunk. Drunk. You say, Brian, what'd you do? I said, I invited him in. Now, I'm not like Steve Ayers. Steve Ayers told one man to come to his church drunk. He said, just go inside. The second section up there is a the drunk section. I didn't do that. I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. But it's time to be a foot washing church. It's time to put a towel around us. How can I help you? How can I serve you? How can I wash your feet? And then we've got to dry them. We're going to talk about that later on, okay? Then you've got to anoint them. But we've got to serve.